Hi, it's Rachel with Shades of Blue Interiors, and today I'm going to demonstrate the brush technique of dry brushing. I've been wanting to get into demonstrating brush techniques, but I was looking for the right piece, and I finally came across this cute little end table. This piece I've already gotten started a little bit. You can see this side. It looks a lot lighter and a little bit more weathered. It's a very soft, distressed look without actually having to use sandpaper. And it is, I think it's very restoration hardware-ish looking. <laughs> That's even a term. The tools that you need to do this brush technique are, are any print brush. You could even use a chip brush. I prefer my two inch purdy brush but uh, you're gonna want some paint and you can use white or cream or light gray. I prefer light gray for almost any color just because you can barely tell that it's not white, but it, it's a little less harsh than white is. So I've just mixed a little bit of, of this. The base color here is Annie Sloan chalk paint and French linen. I've already put two coats on and my mixture is just some pure white mixed with French linen, but you could really use any gray or any type of paint this technique works great with. And then you're gonna want a paper towel to dab off excess paint. I like having some of the paint higher up on the bristles, uh, even though I'm gonna wipe off like all the excess, because as I get going, it's really nice when I'm brushing on the paint to have a little bit of that residual paint besides just on the ends. I'm gonna start up here and then I'll zoom in and show you a little bit better how it looks. So basically you're just gonna start, when you first touch the brush to your piece, it's gonna leave the most amount of paint. So make it really soft strokes to begin with and do them kind of long. until nice soft strokes until I get less paint. So you can see I'm only just hitting the high points. I'm not really working the brush into all the areas yet. So now that I have most of the paint off the brush, there's still a little bit on there. So I'm gonna go back in areas that I just did long strokes and I'm gonna kinda like go in all different directions. And this, you can see when you get closer to the piece, all of a sudden, all of your brush strokes that you painted the base color with will start showing up a little bit more, and it gives you a really cool texture. Okay, can you see how awesome that texture is? It looks like this is like a super complicated thing, but it's totally not. Okay, so I wanna show you how on a flat surface is a little bit different than on raised surfaces. Uh, it really gives you an opportunity to show off the brush strokes that you've done on the base coat. So that's why I like to do more than just boring straight back and forth when I'm painting the base. I like to go in all different directions because you really get a really cool texture when you do the dry brushing. But you have to be really careful not to put too much on your brush because you can get like all of a sudden spots of color and you don't want to do that. You want to just kind of go in all different directions. So I have barely anything on my brush, but I'm still kind of working, whatever else is left in here, kind of working into the base coat here so I get a lot of texture. And that's how you get a really cool look for the top that looks really weathered. So that's it. That's how you dry brush uh, a 
piece of furniture. It could be a little end table, it could be a chair, it could be a dresser, although it will take you a while if you do a dresser. Um, I prefer to do it on pieces that have a lot of detail and that don't have a lot of flat surfaces. I think those are the best candidates for dry brushing. And I hope I've made this clear. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. I uh, hope you have a great day and thanks for watching.